is Michelle. I work for Girl Scouts Minnesota and Wisconsin Lakes and Pines. I am the customer care assistant, which means I answer the phones and I run the front desk and answer your emails when you send us questions. And my hobby is baking. We're going to talk about icing cakes today. And I own a cottage bakery, so I have lots of fun toys here to help me in my hobby. And what a cottage bakery is is I run the bakery out of my kitchen instead of a separate building outside of my house. Okay, so we're gonna need a few tools to make roses. You can see I've already made a few here. Yellow and orange are my favorite colors. So I made some yellow and orange roses. You're going to want pieces of parchment paper or waxed paper and a rose nail. These can be found at your local crafting stores in the baking aisle. This is actually just blue sticky tack and I use it to hold the paper onto the rose nail. You're going to take um, your piping bag with a tip. This is called, uh, commonly called a rose tip. Um, it is also has a number 104 or a 105 on it. Those are the two most common sizes. Remembering to hold your icing bag at the top so you don't have icing squirting out the back and making a mess. You will take your rose tip and first just make a small pile of icing in the center. Then to make petals, you're going to make sure that the big side of your opening is pointing down and you're going to make one petal at a time by making an arc and you will overlap them and keep going around and around until your rose is the size that you want it you will need to tilt out like this to get your petals to fan out. And there you go. We'll do one more. Place your wax paper or your parchment on the rose nail. And by doing this, as you can see, then you can spread them out, let them dry and harden up a little bit then you can pick them up and put them on your cake. I will also show you another handy tool for picking them up when they are not hardened. So make your center and then start your petals. Start small and overlap them. And as you work your way out, tilt your tip, the top of your tip, out more to fan the petals out. And there you go. Now if we wanted to take this off the nail right away, I have uh, what's called a lifter. And it looks like a scissor and it falls apart really easy which is handy for when you want to wash it. And you just slide those under there and there you go. And then you can slide it right onto your cake. I have the cake I iced and smoothed out right here and we can set it right down on there. There we go our first rose on our cake. I will get the rest of the roses on there and then I'll show you how to make leaves. Now since we have uh, some of these that are dried out, you might actually want to take a little bit of wet icing and use it kind of like glue to stick it down onto your cake. There we go. 
go. And one more. Okay, now that we have our roses on our cake, our roses need some leaves. So I have some green icing in my bag. And if you can see this tip, it looks kind of like an open jaw here. And the number on this one is 352. You're gonna make a leaf, and I'll show you on my rose nail, by having the point down and wiggling back and forth to make a leaf. And you can make them as big or as small as you like to fill in in between your flowers. So let's fill in some leaves between our roses. There we go. Now you can arrange your roses in any way you want. You could put them around the edge. The way they are on here would leave a lot of space to write happy birthday or happy anniversary or good luck on there. What we're gonna do next is two different kinds of borders. Last time we talked about uh, using piping bags with tips and using Ziploc bags. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna do is um, a tip that is commonly used. It is um, got the serrated, it's called a star tip. This one has a number 32 on it and we're gonna make what's called a shell. So you hold the, t the bag at approximately 45 degrees and you begin to squeeze until you get kind of a little pile and as you pull back you let go and then you push the next one into it so that they look like they're overlapping and we can go around the whole edge and what's nice about doing a border is is it can cover up some flaws. Let me see, like right here, you can see I put a green crumb coat on my cake and it's showing through a little bit. But once we have the border on there, that's gonna be covered up. And your border doesn't have to be white. It can be any color that you want. There we go, now we have a top border on our cake. And I actually forgot to get a Ziploc bag ready for us. So what I'm gonna use instead is my piping bag without a tip. It's gonna work very similar to a Ziploc bag. It's just gonna have the circle opening at the end and we're going to do a border of drops. So again, holding the bag, at about 45 degrees. Whoop, there we go. You'll squeeze until you have the size of drop you want. And then without lifting up, you'll let go of the pressure and swirl a little bit to have it let go. Otherwise you end up with 
little points like that. So depending on if you want them smooth or to have the little points, it's your choice. And we'll go around like that. Oops, see I let go too soon on that one. It's got really pointy. And this does take some practice. I haven't made these in a really long time. You can see some of my sprinkles are getting stuck in them. That's okay. Everything's better with sprinkles. And there we go. Now we have drops for our bottom border. So last time we talked about consistencies of icing, how you want uh, stiff icing for roses and thin icing for doing writing on a cake. So I purposely made my icing for my leaves uh, thinner than I would really want it for leaves because I wanna show you how to do some writing. I'm gonna get one of my very tiny tips. Uh, the tiniest tips are numbered one through about five and they're really good for doing writing on cakes. I'm gonna use a number three. You see it has a very small tip in it. So let's write Girl Scouts on our cake. I'm gonna. Now, if you aren't sure how words will fit, one trick is to kind of uh, trace it in with a toothpick, and then you can cover it up with the icing. And I know a lot of you watching probably haven't learned how to read cursive, so I am going to print today. And it's really easy to want to go too fast. And when you go too fast, your icing won't keep up and you'll get breaks in your icing. Just like that. There we go. And now you have a completed cake. And no matter what your cake looks like and what colors you choose, whether you use, use sprinkles or not, or flowers or not, just have fun and make it your own.